Hi there, folks. My name is Nicholas Bernard Hansen, the creator of Johnny Butter's American Narcissism, and currently in the bipolar Butter on the Block experiment, day 11 of 40. I'm going to be reading uh, some excerpts from the book that I'm working on entitled Intense uh, Ramblings of a Manic Dep Depressive Reefer Addict uh, Video Maker. Uh, here's uh, some ramblings from chapter one, set to a little uh, Mozart in the background. The book is uh, very stream of consciousness and is dated, and I will try to explain what was going on during those dates after the passage. March 10th, 2011, I will attempt to coherently explain my incoherent mind that is becoming increasingly lucid. My name is Johnny Butter, and I've been so high in the sky on my romantic explosions that I believe myself to be Jesus Christ. And I've been so low that I've curled up in the fetal position, imagining for hours on end, slitting my own throat with a blade in my kitchen. I must write. I must continue to write. It is my only choice. My bizarre ramblings will most likely hold little substance for the general public, but maybe, just maybe, I will connect with one other lonely soul out there. Human nature lends itself to intense suffering. So this was post uh, psych ward in a kind of depressive phase. Moving back into some just crazy pot smoking uh, manic times. Uh, April 22nd, 2009. Writing a kind of poem here. Uh, about my alter ego, Johnny Butter, and myself. Johnny Butter and I are just driving. They ain't no point in mind. We've got an ounce of weed that I've been craving, and so we light a bowl on fire and enter the shire of our personal ebbs and flows. Johnny turns manic, and I turn inward, searching for the answers to questions that previously eluded my damaged psyche. It is amazing how I was so lost just moments ago, but now the world is my fat oyster, and I want to catch it on a fishing pole and dangle it in the water in front of me, and then pluck it off the line and take a peek at it, only to, dis to dismiss it back to its home, knowing that I gained its knowledge and added the knowledge of the new to my foo. I type now at a rate faster than can possibly exist and it feels good, it feels damn good. I started cocaine before and then I put on a two hour live performance in front of three professors and aced the shit out of it. I'm the man, maybe or maybe not, I'm not really sure either way. I know that it feels damn good to be typing this fast. I'm nervous but excited. I see a red cup. I can type faster than almost anyone whosoever walked on this earth faster than Randy Bailey, the balding female secretary at Holy Rosary Middle School. Speaking of Holy Rosary, that is where I came from. I spent 10 years there and made a hell of an impression, I think. Can this rate of typing possibly continue? Continue. Kerouac wrote a novel in two days. I'm pretty sure I can produce something by the week or by the day. Just start throwing stuff up online with absolutely no regard for anything or anybody. Just put it out there. Do it. Continue to type and type and type and type and type and type and type. Become a huge advocate of the legalization of marijuana. Write to High Time magazines once a month. Put yourself out there. In short, it's not writing. It's typing. Said. Truman Capote, look up Kerouac's rules of writing in Wikipedia, it's fascinating. My, my hand and wrist are getting tired, but I must go on, mustn't I? Yes, I must write. Write a book, a full color collage, make a television show, a play, all relating to Johnny Butter, this young character that you must play. You must play him to save everybody else, all the other maniacs out there. Save up all the money that you can and then move to Uptown and then move to Florida for a month and then back to Uptown. Make money, 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 make money, honey, 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 money. Bunch of garbly goo followed by, you need to open an experimental movie slash film school in Minneapolis, save a bunch of money, do it, 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 live it, feel it, gosh, it feels great to write and type and know that no matter how terrible and frightful my mood may become, deep down somewhere there's a higher, better mood, do not abuse the green, embrace it and use it for better creative facilities, but do not abuse substances. So that writing was... Um, you know, kind of when I was smoking a bunch of pot, my mind was racing so fast, and I had so many ideas, but I couldn't actually follow through on, on most of them. This is February 7th, uh, 2009, Marijuana and the Mind by Nicholas Bernard Hansen. Over the course of the past year or two, I've become an almost daily smoker of cannabis. I'm a pothead. However, every day that I smoke, I believe will be my last day doing so. I always plan on quitting tomorrow, but I never can. Still, I go on living every day like it is my last one. Hello, my name is Nicholas Bernard Hansen. I'm a pothead. This is how I introduced myself recently at a marijuana anonymous meeting that I attended heavily under the influence of the drug that seemed to have become a bit of a problem for everyone in the room. There was Barry, a 50-ish guy who swore that he was prone to the magical magnetic pull from the herb. There was Linda who te teared up as she discussed how marijuana had eroded every one of her relationships. There was... Then we cut off. 
uh, Wednesday, September 29th, 2010, 9.53 p.m. Um, this is post-psych uh, ward a month or two after I got out. I've decided to begin a never-ending dialogue of my brain. My name is Nicholas Bernard Hansen. I have bipolar affective disorder number one with psychotic features. This currently seems to be the most prevalent concept in my life at the moment as I continually attempt to stabilize myself. I believe writing constantly may help this process of rediscovering myself. 75 days ago, I was checked into a mental hospital by my parents and friends. I had acquired a studio space and was convinced that I was creating a media empire that would soon be worth millions of dollars. I was smoking excessive amounts of marijuana and dousing my soul with whiskey coke after whiskey coke. I had quit taking my meds and quit sleeping almost entirely, and yet I was having a ball. People ask me what it was like. I tell them it's like being high on cocaine all day. The ganja gave everything a magical feel. I'm a movie maker, so I have multiple cameras rolling at all times in a Truman Show-esque fashion. I look at the footage of that guy. I say that guy because I really do not feel like the same person, and I want to go back to those times. Insanity can be exhilarating. Everything was grand and sharp. Danger and greatness lurking around every corner. It was exciting. I fucking miss the mania. I think that may be my main issue right now, admitting that life is better. Better is an obtuse word. I have to admit that life is manageable now. Where he's pre-psych ward, I was hurtling into outer space. Everything seems very bizarre now. The normalcy feels weird. When I first got out of the ward, I felt high again because I was hallucinating like crazy. Halos over people's heads and that kind of shit. But now everything just feels very surreal. I feel like God is in complete and utter control of my life and everything that happens to me over the course of the day seems poignantly important. Sometimes something as simple as tying my shoe can produce a wide variety of notions, thoughts, and concepts. It becomes difficult for me to go forward with day-to-day -day tasks. I need a cigarette. Back for more later. Um, thanks so much for listening. Day 11 on the block here. Um, things are just trooping along fine.